All right, first off, just uh, kind of assess how effective you think the bye week was in kind of rejuvenating your team and refocusing everyone. Well, I tell you, you know, you know having an opportunity to play against Open uh, is always a, uh, a really good deal for your football team. Uh, it allows you, you know, to get healthy. Uh, you also get a victory that week without having to score any points. So uh, it was definitely, definitely beneficial to us uh, to really, you know, after being on the road and, and coming home and playing for so many weeks to really take a week off. Are you where you want to be right now in terms of just in terms of navigating through the season, the record you thought you'd have? Are you where you want to be right now? Well, we, we, we never really thought about where we wanted to be. We basically just wanted to put one foot in front of the other uh, and play as hard as we possibly can and then let the chips fall where they may. Uh, we're grateful and thankful that we're in this position, uh, which is in the driver's seat. You know, um, like I said all along, you know, um, uh, this team, um, the players were here and uh, just having the opportunity to develop them and, and coach them and really get them in a position that we need them in uh, has actually helped us to, to be where we are. What do you feel the biggest thing you've you accomplished during the bye week? Uh, the biggest thing during the bye week, what we wanted to do was, first of all, get healthy, uh, which was the first thing that we wanted to do. And I think we did that uh, looking at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, report from injury report. Um, everyone is, is ready to roll. Uh, other than DJ Williams, uh, everyone is ready to roll and uh, ready to get back to work. Uh, also, we wanted to make sure that we put some younger kids in positions to see if they can uh, uh, kind of develop a little bit more for us uh, so we can create a little more depth. So we were able to do that this week. I know with DJ not healthy, but you meant, didn't mention Steven being not healthy. Does mm -hmm. that still mean you're going to stick with, with Jonathan going forward? Yes, uh, Jonathan is our starting quarterback uh, for the remainder of the year. Uh, Steven is healthy. Uh, he's been healthy for the last uh, two or three weeks. So uh, it's not that he's not able to play. It's just that Jonathan is just playing such a uh, – and just doing a great job for us that it's hard to – uh, to take him off the field, and uh, I'd be uh, crazy as a coach to do so. When did you tell him, I guess officially, like this is your job for the rest of the year? We never really uh, made it official. Um, it just it just kind of has gone that way. Um, everyone uh, understands, and uh, and uh, everyone has kind of fallen and fell into their roles, and um, and really understanding what we need to do in order to be successful. So, um, Steven's doing a good job of helping him, being his eyes and and he on the sideline, uh, which is the same role Jonathan had when Stephen was on the field. So uh, the good thing about our quarterback situation is they're both team players, um, and it's all about Grambling State University uh, and our football team, not about just them. Uh, what do you, how would you assess uh, the things that are good about um, Texas Southern? What are their strengths and weaknesses, you think? Texas Southern, uh, I know defensively they're a very, very physical ball club. Um, uh, when they get off the bus, you definitely know that they're here. Uh, but they are a very physical ball club, a blitzing style defense, uh, really get after the quarterback. Uh, and then, you know, they're very, very smart in how they play the game. So um, it's going to definitely be a task for us to make sure that we, uh, that we do what we're capable of doing. But uh, like I've said all along, um, we, we basically focus on ourselves. Um, even though we know that about them, we focus on ourselves and make sure that, uh, that we're doing what we're supposed to do. You're always about giving grades and, and pushing this team to be better. How do you think that's, that's helped them just see that they can be an even better team after, after a win? Well, I think um, when you look at the film and you look at the footage, you know, a lot of people see the scoreboard and they think, well, you know, Gremlin is playing well. But when you really look at the film and evaluate the film, there are tons of mistakes there. Um, so I think it helps us to understand uh, and gives us confidence of, of how good we possibly can be. Um, um, you know, so uh, so it's good to go back to the drawing board and just continue to develop uh, in order to make everything right. Is that something you do notice with, when you say, you know, you give these grades like C plus, <laughs> a B minus, and everything, and like you said, you do look at the scoreboard and you do see that you're five and zero in swag, and then look and kind of think you're back ahead. Like we're winning these games, but we do have so much more potential. Right. It seems almost scary in right. a way that how good that y'all can truly be. Right, and. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we focus on uh, the big plays, you know, but there is a lot of plays in there where, uh, where we have to play better. But mainly our focus when I'm giving grades is always playing from within. Uh, everything we do starts from within. And it's, it's playing with passion, 
playing hard, playing with focus, and, and executing on every play uh, because we give an execution grade on every play. Uh, so if we run, like last week, we ran 59 snaps. Uh, of those 59 snaps, how many perfect plays did we have uh, as an entire unit? Uh, and the same thing defensively. So uh, when you're not having as many perfect plays, um, there are sometimes you can score a touchdown on an imperfect play. Um, where someone makes up for someone else's mistake. So our focus is that all 11 on both sides of the ball, special teams included, uh, play perfectly. What changes about this point of the season when you get into November football, in your opinion? Uh, to me, uh, the only thing that changes is, is making sure that we stay the course. Um, you know, we have, to, we have to continue with our plan. Uh, we have to keep the same mindset uh, and continue to play with passion. Uh, I think we can play even harder. Uh, so really the push for our coaching staff has been to get our players uh, to play extremely hard and, uh, and to really put it all out there. Back to Jonathan. I, I, I know he's been playing well and everything, but relatively doesn't have many starts under his belt. Right. That's the truth. How much do you think the, the bye week truly helped him, maybe not even him, but just chemistry in terms mm -hmm. of, Offense, wide receivers, everything, just, just game flow-wise. Well, I think, it, I think it did benefit him because it allowed him to take a step back uh, and really focus on uh, just throwing the ball to his receivers. Uh, so often we're working on game plans, and you really don't have as much time to really focus on understanding a person's body language because a receiver's body language tells you a lot about when he's coming out of a break, when he's ready to receive the ball. Uh, so... Uh, so that week really helped him uh, just focus on throwing to his guys uh, because keep in mind, you know, he's been throwing to some other guys um, and because uh, he hadn't been in the starting uh, rotation. So, uh, so it allowed him to really get closer with his guys and really know uh, when guys are coming out of breaks. What are the challenges just going on the road again? Uh, for us, we don't look at it as a challenge um, other than the opponent. The opponent is a challenge, but... Um, like I said from the beginning, you know, we'll play anywhere, anytime, any place, and uh, that's the mindset of this football team. Um, we're ready to roll, and um, we're excited about having the opportunity to go to Houston and, uh, and really play in front of our fan base. I know you probably don't listen too much at the, the outside stuff as a coach, but during the bye week, um, did you get a lot of stuff around town, just a lot of excitement? I mean, what was what was the sense yeah. from your perspective of, of the feedback that you're getting so far? Yeah, I tell you, uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback uh, from our fan base and just from people in the community. Uh, and all of that is good. Um, but, you know, for me, I try to keep uh, everything sober-minded, try to be sober-minded because, um, you know, you start, you start feeding into a lot of the pets on the back, then you become a different player and a different person and a different coach. Um, so for me, it's, it's all about... Uh, making sure we remain humble, uh, keeping our players uh, at that at that mindset, and uh, and really continuing the path in, in which we're on. How do you think the players have reacted to that in, in terms of that? I won't know until tonight. Uh, but uh, but plan wise, coaching staff wise, it's going to be a tough night. We're going to make it very tough uh, because we want to make sure after a a long vacation uh, weekend of really getting a lot of pats on the back, we want to make sure that they're sober-minded. You mentioned uh, back in week two the growth from uh, the first week, first game, to the second game, second mm -hmm. game, to the third game. Uh, where are you now with the, the team's growth as far as from now in, in almost week 10? Well, I'll tell you, I'm very pleased with our growth. Um, I, think, I think we've come a long ways. Um, I thought that the Houston and Bethune games were the, the turning point uh, in our season. Um, um, because coaching the coaching staff to player and player to coach, we were still trying to learn each other. Uh, we were still making a lot of mistakes. Um, but I think after we didn't play very well at, in Houston and didn't play with, uh, with the right discipline, level of discipline that we wanted, um, I think they understood that, um, that, they, that we had a long way to go. Uh, and then I thought the next week after, the, after that game when we went down uh, to Florida, I thought our kids played hard and played with passion, and we still made mistakes, but I think that was a turning point uh, because in the locker room there were a lot of tears, uh, a lot of kids that had, had put everything out there. And I think they started to understand that if they play with the same passion but clean up the miscues, uh, we can have a chance to be successful. I know you've played some uh, FPS teams, and then Bethune. 
uh, where would you, I guess, maybe put Texas Southern in terms of their defense, uh, in terms of their talent, and some of the things that they might be able to do Saturday? Well, um, I think I, I put them right in the middle of the pack, you know, um, in the conference. Uh, uh, they're aggressive, very aggressive style, you know, and, uh, and um, you know, I thought they did a good job uh, last week, even though they didn't win the ball game. Um, you know, trying to stop Pine Bluff's quarterback is, is a tough handle, you know, but... Uh, uh, but they're they're a tough bunch, uh, just like anybody else. Uh, they're going to line up where they're supposed to be. Uh, they're going to make sure that their kids are, are focused and playing extremely hard. Uh, because anytime you know, and this is just history. Anytime uh, Gremlin rolls in town, you know, you're going to get the best game out of them. You know, so um, so we have to make sure that we're ready to play and and not to the point where we're reacting to their uh, their enthusiasm. We want people to react to us. Last time we talked about the, the, the trap game, do you think that that's in, in the past now that you were able to o kind of overcome, overcome that hump after the Alcorn game and come back with, with a win last weekend? Do you think that that's kind of not I, I never I never think that that's over um, because um, anytime you're dealing with 18 or 22-year-old uh, student athletes, you know, um, you have to make sure that you do everything in your power to make sure they're ready. Uh, so the mindset for me is always um, be tough on them. Um, and, and really help them to understand that uh, there's a certain way that we have to play, and they have to continue to reach that bar. And uh, they've done a good job at, at, at attempting to reach it, uh, but by no means are we there just yet. Do you feel you still play as underdogs? Um, I don't think so. You know, um, that's a really good question. You know, I don't think we, we are. Uh, I think people uh, really know about us now, um, but it's mainly about us, you know, uh, our focus has always been, you know, about us, Grambling State University, and, and playing the way we're capable of playing. We don't look at the opponent. Yes, we look at the fact of what they're doing offensively, defensively, and in a kicking game. Uh, but after that, it's basically focused on us. I think maybe a better way of wording that would be, like, do you go into games as trying not to be the favorite, trying to... I guess always carry a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, I think uh, that's the attitude of our team. Um, um, even when you know things weren't going well, we we wanted to play with a chip on our shoulders, and I thought our kids did. You know, it just um, you know maybe the mindset has changed a little bit because uh, some things have actually happened well for us. You know, but um, we just gonna address it the same way and continue to roll the same way.